In 1962, the Cold War was heating up in America's backyard. Since aligning himself with the Soviet Union, Cuban dictator Fidel Castro was an object of growing U.S. concern. A failed attempt to oust him from power in April 1961 through the use of Cuban exile forces emboldened both Castro and his Kremlin supporters. In May 1962, Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev offered to install offensive nuclear weapons in Cuba. Castro readily agreed, viewing the missiles as a deterrent against another U.S. attempt to force him from power. Missiles began to arrive that summer under the tightest secrecy. Khrushchev's plan depended on getting the missiles operational before the Americans discovered they were there. But U.S. intelligence quickly learned that something unusual was afoot on the island nation. In early October, U-2 and Navy reconnaissance flights provided alarming but conclusive evidence that the Soviets were constructing missile launch sites throughout Cuba. President Kennedy immediately assembled his national security team, including military members of the Joint Staff, to determine a course of action. After several days in which all the options were weighed, the administration announced a strict naval quarantine of Cuba in which U.S. Navy ships would prevent any further offensive military weapons from being delivered to Cuba. It shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile launched from Cuba against any nation in the Western Hemisphere as an attack by the Soviet Union on the United States. While this policy was deemed less risky than a full-scale strike against Cuba, it was not without risk. A blockade was, after all, an act of war. But by calling it a quarantine and limiting it to offensive military weapons, the U.S. gained support from key Allied governments. It looks like it's up to the Navy, Kennedy said to Chief of Naval Operations Admiral George W. Anderson. Mr. President, the Navy will not let you down, Anderson replied. Indeed, the burden fell squarely on the U.S. Navy. Naval forces under U.S. Atlantic Command, headed by Admiral Robert L. Dennison, steamed out to sea, intercepting not only merchant shipping en route to Cuba, but Soviet submarines operating in the area as well. One of the first destroyers on the scene, USS Blandy, diligently tracked a Soviet Foxtrot submarine, eventually forcing it to surface. We now know these submarines were carrying nuclear-tipped torpedoes and were the spearhead of a Soviet effort to establish a naval base on Cuba. U.S. destroyers maintained the quarantine. Radar picket ships supported by Navy fighters and airborne early warning planes assisted the U.S. Air Force's Air Defense Command in preparing to defend American airspace from Soviet and Cuban forces. The aircraft carriers, cruisers, destroyers, and Marine forces of the 2nd Fleet under Vice Admiral Alfred G. Ward were poised to launch air, naval gunfire, and amphibious strikes against Soviet and Cuban forces ashore if the quarantine failed. For 13 days in late October, the world held its breath. This is Radio Moscow. Premier Khrushchev has sent a message to President Kennedy today. The Soviet government has ordered the dismantling of weapons in Cuba, as well as their crating and return to the Soviet Union. The Soviet ships turned back. The crisis was over. Khrushchev, faced with the armed might of the United States and its allies, had little choice but to find some way out of the difficult situation in which he had placed himself and his country. President Kennedy did not press the advantage that the strength of U.S. and Allied naval and military forces gave him. That allowed the Soviet leader to peacefully disengage his nation from this most serious of confrontations. For the rest of the Cold War, the U.S. and Soviet Union never again reached the brink of what would have been a world-altering nuclear conflict. The lesson is clear. The U.S. Navy has kept the sea free for over 200 years. The Navy not only protected America in 1962, it continues to provide a potent deterrent to any force that threatens peace today.